Uh, today's topic of discussion is in regards to one of the core sensors for the depth tracking system and this core sensor is the hook load sensor uh, and you have pictures of how it is mounted on the rig. Uh, the purpose of the hook load sensor is to measure the tension on the cable which supports the traveling block and it is usually mounted on the dead end on the deadline end or the anchor point of that cable which is stationary on the side you have a clip of the same image which has been zoomed in to show how the uh, the hook load sensor attaches to one such cable today we're going to discuss um, about five topics i'm going to present on five topics the first topic is on models of the hook load sensors that mesentel supplies after that, I will discuss the working principle of the hook load sensor. There's a three-point loading system. There's a there's a strain gauge there, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss about, about uh, on how that works to collect the measurements. Uh, there'll be calibration, which is an which is an important step in the hook load sensor operation out in the field. So we're gonna cover step by step how that's done, and I'm gonna look at the mounting tips for the hook load sensor and you've already seen a picture of how that goes about so we're going to just uh, expound expose more on that on that on that uh, on that topic uh, and then topic number five will be on hook load threshold for auto slips and this is the other application the other useful application of the hook load sensor if you have it working with the depth tracking system in that you can actually use a threshold of the hook load sensor to indicate slips in or slips out condition okay so on to the first topic of discussion and this one is in regards to the models of the hook load sensors that are supplied by mesentel when bundled with the depth racking system and these models are as follows there's this one here shown in the picture and this one is typical in the North America market and this is one of the models that Mesentel stocks for supply. Um, there's the typical design of the hook load sensor is where you have a middle portion with a, with, a, with a mechanism for pushing down the cable onto the body of the hook load sensor and then you have end supports right there. And what this creates is a three point loading system that we will revisit in the, in the next slide. The other two models are imported from China and they all work under the same principle. You have a middle portion uh, which, which, whose purpose is to push down on the cable and this one does that by using bolts and you have also those end supports uh, on that hook load sensor as well. And the, the third one which is on the side there on the right hand side has a handlebar similar to the first one and it also has those end supports and the handlebar by tightening that you push down on the cable to create the three-point support system and this one is in regards to the working principle of the hook load sensor for the depth tracking system and on this slide you can see an oval white highlight which shows a photograph of the hook load sensor and onto that you see a cable which goes through the hook load sensor just as it would be used in the field uh, the handlebar is used to press down on the cable so that the end supports hold the cable into a, into a three-point system and that three-point system is further highlighted or elaborated on the line drawing illustration right here and you see that the center support by pushing down on the cable the cable will 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 be pushing up on that given that there's a tension force exerted and the maximum recommended tension force uh, for direction drilling applications is 100,000 pounds. The, um, by having the three-point contact system you can see that the end supports have the cable exerting a downward force on those supports and with this arrangement the body of the um, the body of the whole sensor will be under a bending force and there is a strain gauge that is attached internally and using the strain gauge there's a signal conditioning circuitry inside that yields a signal of 4 to 20 milliamps which is collected by the data acquisition system and then and then it is scaled by the software program to give you the uh, the hook load that the desired hook load or the tension force on the cable and that one is also used to determine the weight on bit uh, it, it is also used to derive the weight on bit uh, for that for the setup 
So this is the working principle of the Hoopla sensor. On to the third topic of discussion, and this one is in regards to the hook load calibration, the hook load sensor calibration for the depth tracking system. And what you will find here is that you will start off with a with a predefined calibration uh, calibration table. So you're going to have predefined numbers, uh, which means that you won't have to enter these in yourself while you're out there in the field. Uh, meaning that these were derived from the shop and usually these ones would work uh, for a while until they go out of calibration but the starting measurements that you the starting value that you see here are the ones that you need to apply uh, onto the um, for the calibration of the hookload sensor there is a, an indicator uh, which is for the um, live reading of the hookload sensor uh, which is a current value in milliamps and uh, you could actually use this one to to recalibrate in the field for example if you know the load at a given milliamp reading you could put those numbers in this table but in this case uh, you might as well just go with the predefined calibration numbers uh, the other thing on the on the uh, table here are the the tension values uh, that correspond to every milliamp reading that you can you can see there they have been entered right there uh, since this is a 4 to, to 20 milliamp signal sensor, uh, the reading at the 4 milliamp value is typically 0, and this one is close to 4, is 3.96 according to the shop measurements that were taken. And the other load measurements uh, that were taken, they go all the way from 15,000 pounds to 62,500 pounds. And this one completes the calibration table with those, four point, with those 5 points right there. Another important setting is the hook load sensor threshold value for slips on and this one means that if the hook load measures a value greater than 10,000 then it means that the slips are they're, they're taken out and that the, the drill pipe is hanging on the drill block and if it's less than that then this software will assume that the slips are in so this is an important value so that you can implement the auto slips detection uh, feature of the of the software for the slip switch. Okay, so uh, the other the other uh, item which is important too is the pulley K factor, and what this means is that when you have your hook load sensor attached to the deadline, uh, the traveling block will actually be supported by more than just one cable, and therefore the uh, there's a mechanical advantage in the sense that the uh, if you want to find out the uh, the actual hook load then you'll have to multiply by the number of cables which are supporting the traveling block and in these two examples there's this one here that shows six cables so you count the number of cables uh, the total number of cables that are supporting the traveling block in this case there are three on this side and three on the other side and that adds up to six and on the other one on the other diagram, it's, it's, which it is pretty small, so you can't count easily, but those ones are 6 on each side, which gives a total of 12. So this K factor is what is entered uh, over here for the pulley K factor, so that the, uh, the hook load sensor can be multiplied. The hook load sensor, from, the hook load sensor reading from one cable can be, can be multiplied by the K factor to get the total pull on the traveling block. So that K factor is also an important value to remember to enter. Now on to the fourth topic of discussion and this one is in regards to the hook load sensor mounting. And uh, there's an illustration right there on the right side which has a, uh, a diagram which is labeled uh, which is labeled in detail on, on what's happening in the, on, the, uh, on the rig site there. So on the left side you have the drum and this is the draw works drum where you attach your the encoder is actually attached here and and the draw works drum has a reel uh, or has a cable reel and which goes onto the uh, pulleys that support the traveling block and from the from this drawing you can see that there are eight lines that are strung to support the traveling block so the k factor in this case would be the eight the number eight right there now the cable coming out of the drawworks drum is the traveling cable so this one is the moving cable so you can put the 
you cannot put the hook load sensor there because it will be carried back and forth with the uh, with the cable movement however there's the anchor point down here which you can see over here uh, and there's a storage reel for that and there's a deadline anchor which means this is a stationary a stationary position or a stationary point of the cable so the cable stretch from the from the top there from the crown block all the way to the deadline anchor is stationary and this is called the deadline and this is the uh, cable segment where the hook load sensor will be attached okay um, now if you look at the uh, the actual situation in the field is this is the picture that we saw before and uh, and, uh, and that's that's the uh, deadline segment of the cable and here of course you can see the rig on the foreground there and so this these these drawings these pictures are they're similar to what you see here in the illustration and that's the tip of how you mount the uh, the hook load sensor in that you always go with the deadline end where you're going to have an anchor point and from there you can attach the hook load sensor so that, so that, so that it is safe and stationary um, on that last topic and this one is in regards to the uh, hook load sensor configuration for auto slips and that is for the depth tracking system uh, what we have here we have two screenshots uh, the one on the on the left and the one on the right so I'm gonna start with the one on the left which shows that the threshold value is 20,000 and the hook load value is 37,000 which means it's higher than the uh, than, than the threshold value and if that is the case then it means that the slips are out and the bit depth changes and why is that it's because we are assuming that the traveling block is attached to the uh, to the drill pipe. We can see the uh, the green the green area here. This the, this is the representation of the drill pipe, in the sense that the two are now attached, and then there are no slips, and therefore movement of the traveling block will translate into movement of the bit depth. So when the slips are out, the bit depth will be changing. Now, if you go to the right screenshot, the right hand side screenshot you will find that the hook load sensor has now reduced to 18,400 and the threshold was 20,000 so in this case the hook load sensor is less than than the threshold and this will trigger the event of the slips being engaged and therefore the pipe is no longer attached to the traveling block in the sense that movement of the traveling block will not translate into movement of the bit and therefore the bit depth will be frozen. So this is how the hook load sensor can be used to activate auto slips without the user having to engage that manually. And this is also this also tells us that the the use of the of the slips is to freeze the uh, the, the change in the bit depth once the slips are engaged so that the traveling block is just traveling on its own. And this typically happens when you're trying to pick up a pipe or pick up a stand uh, for the next drilling phase. So that concludes the presentation for the hook load sensor for the portable depth tracking system as provided by Mesentel. Thank you for your time and we'll see you in the next presentation.